What the fuck do I think of sleeping dogs? Well, let me tell you. In my opinion so far, it seems to be one of the most solid games of this summer. To give you a bit of history, the game's development started out late 2008 as Black Lotus for the then relatively new United Front games. However, in 2009, the IP's publisher, Activision, which had published the previous true crime games, suddenly decided that using the true crime name would help the game sell. And you know, it seems logical too, seeing as he's a fucking police officer. Anyways, almost a year went by and still no major word on the game passed. Then on August 6, 2010, Activision decided to delay the game until 2011 to give the game more development time. To the dismay of everyone, the game was to join the ranks of Duke Nukem Forever, Max Payne 3, and still, Half-Life Episode 3. Where is it, Gaben? Come on. But I digress. And for now, it seemed people were left to spectate on the details instead of have any actual info on the game. On January 9, 2011, just six months after the announcement, Activision decided to cancel the game altogether, stating the game was just not good enough. For Activision, the slow progress and high development costs was seemingly unjustified, while for fans it seemed like the long-awaited sequel was to be forgotten forever. forever, ever, ever, ever. Or was it? August 2011 proved to be a glimmer of hope to the fans that had since given up on a sequel. It had appeared that the rights of the game had been purchased by Square Enix in a deal that, quote, instantly recognized the huge potential in the game and the team. But for some reason, Square Enix decided not to buy the rights of True Crime Hong Kong, but instead opted for the name of Sleeping Dogs. Still, many veterans of the series, including me, see this as a spiritual successor. And it shows in the gameplay. Here, take a look. One of the main driving points is despite all the long development, the game manages to look really good. The plot is semi-convincing, but I never really managed to give a fuck about the story. You're a cop working undercover with the HKPD, and besides that, that's pretty much it. That is, until you get past a few missions and actually realize this character is deciding whether to go with the cops, or to go with the Sun Yi, the leading triad. The Sun An Yi is an obvious nod to the Sun Yi An, one of the real triads in the Hong Kong area. Anyways, as the story progresses, you're really breaking your balls to keep your cover, which really adds to the immersion of the story. Anyways, the second thing I'd like to talk about here is gameplay. True to its nature, Sleeping Dogs hasn't changed much since its time as True Crime Hong Kong. It's still the same free running you've come to expect. The only thing I'd like to say is, where exactly have we found that before? When the game was initially announced in 2009, the only competing game that had parkour movements as well as most free running was just Mirror's Edge. And this was one of the selling points that they tried to use. They said that the game was mostly ground based in terms of parkour and free running. Well, the truth is, it's an even split. You got a fair deal of ground chases, and also you got a good deal of rooftop chases. My only complaint is sometimes there's just too much of them, but this feeling only appears after you've done about 50, so you should be good in the meantime. And besides that, hey, does anybody remember this from, you know, two years ago? And believe me, I'm not saying that just to be a cynical asshole, it's actually true. On top of that, I'm not even using it in a negative context either. Anyways guys, I want to back up the claim that sometimes these fights are repetitive by saying, at the end of every chase, there's always a crowd waiting for you to fight. This really is a bother when the main guy just leaves like a fucking pussy and you can't chase after him instead. But eventually you kill all the guys and you move on. Namely, to this place. You remember this from the trailers too? It kind of looks kind of like this. That again, was two years ago. Here is it now. Again, nothing has changed in terms of the environment, but that's not the point. As you can see on the characters, they now flash red when they're about to attack. That's different from the 2010 version in which a yellow arrow shines above their head. Keep in mind, the game was still known as True Crime Hong Kong back then. Despite the environment, the graphics seem to have a little bit of an improvement over time. I'm sure they opted for higher textures, because you know, textures are everything. Additionally, let's have one final look of the 2010 version. Hmm, yellow and brown. I wonder where that was used before in a Square Enix game. Oh yeah, that's fucking right! Ever since they changed that, I just don't feel I have the right to criticize them for that anymore. This hasn't stopped them from, however, taking inspiration from other games. For example, in Assassin's Creed 2, when a person says something that's in a foreign language, the captions translate the saying and put it into English. With Sleeping Dogs, it's practically the same thing. The only difference is the foreign text isn't shown. 
Well, I assume this is because not many people have the Chinese language packs necessary to read it. They could just transcribe it into, like, pinyin or some shit. But they don't, and that's understandable. I'm basically griping at this point. Let's move on to the only <coughs> original thing we can agree on. Everything else, I hope. <laughs> All right, you want to be a tough guy? Let's see if you can handle yourself. Dude, see what he's got. Great, that's all I fucking need. Sometimes I just can't tell if it's the voice actor's intended accent or they're just really bad at voice acting. I don't have any examples for this, but if you hear it before, eh. Customization has always been a big thing in the true crime series, and it carries on into Sleeping Dogs. Instead of having to deal with full-on outfits like True Crime Streets of LA in New York City, you can customize your shirt, your pants, and your shoes. Of course, you can actually just have an outfit, and there's some bonuses for doing so. But unlike the last two games, you can't, to my knowledge, dress up as a police officer. You're undercover, okay? And showing up to a triad meeting in full uniform just doesn't sit right with me. There are also some mini-games which you can participate in. Some of them you have to do as part of the mission, but I find most of them enjoyable. In this case, I have to sing karaoke in order to get a VIP pass to the upper rooms, which is where one of the people I have to beat up are. To be honest, Chen isn't that good of a singer, but even if you do good, at least the girls will act like you're a good singer. So, it's its own reward. I know I skipped a lot of shit, but it's basically Saints Row driving in terms of controls and also just cost 2 with the action jump. You can also shoot from the vehicle, like in GTA 4 and, and all the other sandbox games. In summary, the game is original enough and the experience is F-U-N, and even though most of the game's mechanics have been inspired by other games, it's overall a good time. True to Fred's review, I give this game an 8 out of 10. And it did not make me review.